don't even know where to start. <laughs> There's so much. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, then hello, my name is Grace. On this channel, we talk about realistic ways to live an intentional and happy life. This is my minimalism journey. It's the new series that I just started. This is the third video, and I am finally tackling the bedroom. I am nervous to say the least. I have, I'm not like, oh my gosh, so much stuff, but like I have a lot of stuff to go through in this room. I'm sure that a lot of people can relate that like the majority of the items that they could say that they own as a human being are in their bedroom just because I know a lot of the people that watch these videos are probably about my age, like mid twenties, probably have roommates or they're in college, live with other people, live at home, whatever. As I mentioned in my other video, that I talk about kind of like why I'm starting my minimalism journey. I kind of just want to go through my items and pare down because I feel like taking care of the amount of clothes that I have, taking care of the amount of other random things that I have, the visual clutter, all of this, blah, 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 is just really overwhelming and unnecessary. And I feel like as soon as I can detach myself from the sheer amount of physical items that I have, I may potentially be able to focus on other things. If you would like to embark on your own minimalism journey as well, then this would be a great video for you to watch to see my process and get some inspiration of your own. And you know what? It's gonna be an emotional roller coaster, so buckle up. Let's go. Okay, so I really don't even know where to start because there is just so much to get through, but I think clothes are probably a good place to start because I feel like that is the place where most people impulse shop. So the other day I actually did go through and did a first initial sweep of some of the clothes and I got <laughs> that much out. Like this is me as a human person. I'm five foot seven and this is large, it's a lot. And there is still so much to go. <sighs> but anyways, already decluttered a lot of that and I have a bunch of guiding questions and other things to help you pare down your wardrobe. So let's get into that and ask you some of these questions so that you can perhaps start paring down your wardrobe as well while I go through mine again. Because that was just the first round of cuts, okay? There's more. And after I do that laundry at the laundromat tomorrow or whatever, there's gonna be more even still. So I think the number one question in general that you can ask yourself when you're getting rid of things in your room is would my life be more difficult if I didn't have this? So I think that's honestly the number one question of minimalism in general because the whole point of minimalism is mostly having things in your house that you use. Pretty much that's it. I have a guide to help you get rid of the excess stuff in your wardrobe here are some questions you can ask yourself to get rid of some of the extra clothes in my closet. One of the first questions that I ask myself, do I feel comfortable or good in this piece of clothing? We all know that we have a pair of pesky little jeans that are a size or two too small that we have been holding on to and hoping that one day we fit back into them. You know what? If it's been, honestly, more than six months or a year, say goodbye because chances are your body just doesn't look like that anymore and that's okay. If it's been a certain period of time and you know that you are just in a different season of life at this point or your body looks different or whatever, get rid of it. Also the kind of like fidgety dresses where like every time you put it on you're like getting it over your butt and like falling off and blah blah blah, get rid of it. Just you're not gonna wear it because you're gonna be like, oh, if I wear this, I'll be uncomfortable all night. I just had to get rid of all my heels because I'm like, when am I gonna wear these? Never, the answer is never. So just know yourself and know the things that you feel uncomfortable in or that don't fit you anymore and just do yourself a favor, get rid of them. Another great question to almost immediately cut out the excess of your wardrobe is, have I worn this in the last year? If the answer is no, I would say immediately in the bag, goodbye because if you haven't worn it in a year, chances are you aren't going to wear it in the next year or the next or the next. And if you do, it'll probably be like one time and it's not worth it. So get it out of your house, get it out of your wardrobe. I would say in general, as a rule, 
if you wear it less than five to ten times a year it's probably not worth it i don't know it depends on how extreme you want to go if you wear it less than five times a year i would definitely say goodbye maybe less than ten times even it depends on how extreme you're trying to get with paring down your wardrobe. I definitely want to make mine at a much more manageable level because I feel like I'm constantly doing laundry and I'm just so tired of it. If I have less clothes, obviously I'll be doing more laundry to stay on top of it, but it's like a small load of laundry instead of like three giant loads that I am now behind on. Anyways, piggybacking off of that question of have I even worn this in the last year? Do I regularly grab for this? If the answer is no, then I would say the best option would be to give yourself a deadline and if you don't wear it or feel yourself grabbing for it in that deadline, like truly and honestly, don't BS yourself, then just get rid of it. And another option would be to put it away in a box and if you aren't like looking for it, like, oh, where's that green shirt with the Ninja Turtles on it? Then just get rid of it. Rest in peace to my green Ninja Turtles shirt because it actually got stolen and I'm really sad about it still to this day and I really loved it. It was so soft and comfortable. Rest in peace, oh my God. Anyways, um. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so out of all these clothes, some of them are going to be donated, some of them are going to be sold, and some of them are going to be sent back to four days, which is like a bag that you can buy. It costs about $20 to get the bag to send it to you, but you get $20 of like closet cash. So I guess it's kind of annoying if you're trying to go minimalist and then they're like, okay, pay $20 for this. And then you have $20 of money to spend on whatever. I see it as even if you don't want to buy anything, you're paying $20 for them to recycle all of this clothing that is like completely ripped or whatever. I mean, this isn't the perfect example, but just clothes and stuff. Like I have a stained shirt over there that like there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get the stain out because it's like an ink stain and it is just going to be recycled through four days. So that's really cool. So I basically just have to get rid of things that I know I'm not going to read again So essentially for books how I feel about it There are a couple things that I have that are reference books that I will use in the future and things that I do want to read again And that I really really enjoyed reading but there are other books where I really liked it probably won't read it again Maybe I can ask some of my friends if they want them. Otherwise, they are just gonna be donated, but yeah That's how I feel about books. Let's do it the books that I'm getting rid of and now I have to sort through all these cards and more cards and playbills this is my playbill thing getting rid of your stuff can sometimes be a very emotional thing there's a lot of stuff tied to our stuff so being an environmentalist and someone that cares very deeply for the environment this is definitely something that is tough because it's really tough to just throw something away for me and a lot of the time I will just keep it because I don't know how to properly sell it donate it dispose of it whatever so it kind of just clutters up my house and 
you kind of really just have to let go of a lot when you go into minimal minimalism. I know that sounds stupid because obviously you're letting go of stuff, but you have to let go of emotional barriers as well. You have to realize that unpacking the guilt and shame of either wasting money or realizing that you didn't need to buy it in the first place or that it was just something that didn't need to exist or be in your house or whatever and unpacking all of those emotions will kind of help you realize that you don't need to buy other things like that in the future and in general it will cut down on the amount of stuff that you are buying and bringing into your house in the first place which is better for the environment and your wallet in the long run so doing all of this the initial purge is going to be really tough for a lot of people whether they're environmentalists whether they're a sentimentalist or whatever because you're gonna have to throw away and donate a lot of things see what you can do to research places that you can drop off donations and really have a plan in place before I have a bag ready to go and I have a receptacle downstairs in the basement of my building for donations donations of clothes, shoes, stuff like that. So that's where I'm gonna bring my extra stuff and I know I have my plan so that it doesn't just sit in my house and continue to be clutter. And for the sell bag, I'm just going to literally give myself a time frame. If I can't sell it by the time that I leave for New Zealand on December 13th, then I'm just gonna donate it and say, okay, well, you tried. It's not gonna happen and we just have to let it go. Another really important question that kind of ties in with all the emotional stuff is, am I keeping this solely for sentimental reasons? So if yes, where can I keep this so that it's not just collecting dust in a box? Because if you are keeping it for sentimental reasons and it is shoved in a box at the back of your closet or in your garage or whatever, what sentimental value are you actually even getting from it? Figure out how you can actually give it pride of place in your home. Otherwise, honestly, take a picture, keep the picture, give it to someone else who might find it sentimental that you can go to their house and see it. Like one of your family members, if it's like a family heirloom kind of sentimental thing and you really just have it in a box, let someone else display it and have it in their home that you can visit and see it still and get all the sentimental value from it. But it doesn't need to be cluttering up your house. And if it is one of those sentimental things that you can find pride of place for and display and all that stuff, how many sentimental items are you going to allow yourself? Because I know that, like I was saying in my first video, the sort of like scarcity mindset and like clinging on to the past, it can really pile up and you can be like, no, but this is really special because it's the first blah, blah, blah. Or my grandma did that and then she got this and then that blah, 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 blah. You could rationalize every single piece of garbage in your house and that is not meant to be rude, but you really, really can. And that is where the sickness of hoarding and keeping clutter in your home really can get you. What are you gaining from it? If you're gonna have those things, display them, keep them out, have them available. Otherwise, it is just useless to have in your home. Essentially, this is the sort of tough love stuff that we need to think about when we are deciding to declutter or go minimalist or whatever version of minimalist we feel like going because, you know, capitalism, I feel like is a disease. The way that it has run rampant in our lives and made us think that the way to solve all of our problems is to buy more things when a lot of us are really struggling to even put food on the table in a substantial way right now. It's really stressful. So in a way, curing your addiction to shopping and all that stuff, which I am a recovering shopaholic, I will say. Every single time there was a minor inconvenience in my life in college, Hello, forever21.com, how can you help me? It was bad and you have to find different ways to soothe your anxiety and stress. If you have less stuff, you don't have to clean as much stuff. Really think about that. It's not that hard of a concept. You have to really just let go of the shame, let go of all that extra stuff, mourn the parts of your life that you are no longer living in. There is a new season of life waiting for you 
and it's going to be beautiful if you just let it in. Peeling back the extra layers, peeling back the material items, I think is really the key to connecting to who we are as human beings. I really hope that this inspired you in some way or helped you kind of get an idea of how to start your version of your minimalism journey or whatever. I just want to say that I really appreciate you. If this video was helpful or meaningful in some way, I would really, really appreciate it if you could like or subscribe. It really helps me out um, to kind of know the kind of stuff that you guys want to see from me on this channel. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, until next time, I'm sending you all my love. Truly all of my love. Thank you.